Hello everyone, my name is Tom. Welcome back to Let's Talk with Tom, the show where I talk about anything in animation I feel like talking about because this is my show and I do what I want. Y'all can't tell me what to do, except in this case, I guess. Because <laughs> today we're going to talk about Miraculous and this is probably like the most requested video I've ever gotten. I've talked about Miraculous in the past. In fact, it's been a while. I've never drawn nothing miraculous on this whiteboard wall because last time I did a video about miraculous it was in my basement because we didn't have this office yet. It's been like over a year. Like it's been a while. So people have been like yo can you do another one? Because like I guess there's just not a lot of miraculous content out there. So this has been probably the most requested topic I've gotten in the history of Let's Talk except for maybe DuckTales but that wasn't so much because people wanted me to do DuckTales, that was more so people wanted DuckTales. And then once I did it, like, you could tell by reception, they were like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Why is he talking about DuckTales? Anyways, <laughs> in this case, though, I actually do really want to talk about this show because I honestly, like, really enjoy this show. Because, like, I, I know, like, some of y'all might not even believe this because I soften my public persona and whatnot. But, like, in real life, I'm, like, hard. I'm hard, bro. Like... <laughs> I, I, I put off that energy because I'm like, yo, people leave me alone. Because I walk alone at night, alone, which is like something that most people can't do unless they are capable of doing what I just described. But in reality, I'm a very sensitive person, and this show is cute as f and it warms my heart and like makes me feel emotions. But first off, I want to just like take this moment to talk about one of the most glaring issues with this show which is completely unrelated to the plot, it's completely unrelated to the story, the world, the characters. It's the production. The production, the distribution is just a mess. People have been asking me to do a Miraculous video for a long time. And the main reason why I was like, I'm not really comfortable doing one yet, is because I had no idea what was actually going on because the distribution of this show is just all over the place. They're airing episodes out of order so like i had to wait for it to go on netflix to like be sure and be confident about what i was talking about so yeah for all of y'all who were like bro why did it take this long now y'all know why but enough complaining let's actually talk about the show itself i love how in this season the nonsense of this show is just turned up to fan fiction levels and like sometimes when you say like oh this show got fan fiction usually you're saying that in a negative connotation here, we all know why we're watching this show, like, the story and everything, it's coherent enough, but, like, really, we're here for a fanfiction bull****. Like, let's be honest, we want to see how the plot leads us to these character interactions that we want to see, we want to see these relationships explored. So, speaking of the plot, let's just start with, like, the obvious development, Hawk Moth, or also Gabriel Agrest. Spoilers, in case you didn't know that, season 3, you should probably know that by now. <laughs> Realizes that Lila, also known as Volpina, or also, whatever, that girl. He realizes that her being a degenerate with zero boundaries or sense of moral code can be of great use to him as Hawk Moth and also as Gabriel Agrest. I'm gonna use you to keep an eye on Adrian and make sure that he's staying out of any type of trouble and just keep a short leash on his son because he's a controlling father. And also because her toxic presence in a high school full of emotionally vulnerable children is a great way for Hawk Moth to akumatize people, which he's been known to do things like that in the past, i.e. Chloe. But in the case of Lila, she's just like a very capable person both when used as an akumatization type deal and also just because she's a base human scum manipulative rat. So it's just like, hey yo, I can use you. But at the same time as this, because Adrian and Marinette through their superhero identities are the only ones who have really been able to see that Lila is a bold-faced liar. Because Adrian acknowledges to Marinette, like, yo, I don't trust her, and, like, if we trust each other's judgment, then maybe she can't do that much harm, so then that, like, makes them bond and, like, reinforces that relationship. And speaking of those two, the first dynamic in this season that was really taken to new levels was the one between Marinette and Cat Noir. Cat Noir starts to realize, like, yo, wait, Marinette is often here after uh, me and Ladybug do our superhero thing. So, like, that's kind of a coincidence, but maybe it's not a coincidence. Maybe she's here for a reason. And, like, he starts connecting dots out loud, like, talking to Marinette, like, yo, you always here. So that means, and then she's like, oh, sh I can't be exposed as Ladybug. So I'm gonna just say I'm in love with him. And then Cat Noir is like, oh, oh. And, like, because her parents were right there, like, Y'all know how it be. So what this leads to is now Marinette, and then Adrian is Cat Noir, 
they have to kind of put on this like performance of like, oh yeah, like me and Marinette or like me and Cat Noir, we're dating, we're definitely in love. And it's like, it's just taking things to a whole new level because this whole show is based around this dynamic of these two idiots who do not realize that they're in love. <laughs> like that's like a mutual love, but they are in love and they're just longing for each other, not realizing like, homie, if y'all just like knew like this one thing or if y'all paid attention enough to realize like, yo, this homie looks a lot like this person I go to school with. So this show is just built off that dynamic. And then you take that to another, like you just keep like doubling down to where it's like these two are pretending they're in love when they're not in love, but actually they are and they don't realize it. There are layers to this bullshit, <laughs> and I'm living for it. This was one of my favorite episodes this season just because the amount of sheer nonsense going on. Like, I feel like I should be cringing through this, but I'm so captivated. And then like when Cat Noir is like, oh yeah, sorry, I'm not actually interested. Marina has to like, in front of her parents, pretend like she's heartbroken. And then in the end, like, <laughs> Cat Noir reveals like, oh, I was just connecting the dots to say you're a big fan of us. So she didn't even need to say that. She, it was just like, listen, like, this is the nonsense. I live for. This is the chaos and insanity that I fry from, and this is what this show fries on, and that's why I love it so much. Speaking of bullshit, let's talk about all the love triangle. Love square? Love triangle is like, you got one party and then like another party, and it's like that, and it's like going like that or whatever, or like maybe like that, or like maybe this way, I don't know. But like this is a, this is a more like, more like that, but then also that and that, and like they they're not connected, but like and that ends up like actually that's a spoiler. So I don't know what you call this. I'm gonna call it a love triangle because that rolls off the tongue be tongue better. <laughs> like who's gonna be like, yo, this is a love square? No one says that. We're just gonna call it a love triangle because it's the same concept. Whatever. Realistically, the parties are going like that and that and that, so it makes it a triangle, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, Kagami is actually really likable. She became one of my favorite characters this season because yeah, I relate. But before I go into that, I gotta just say, like I know last time I made a video about the show, I went really hard on Luca because like, I don't know, I was speaking from a fan's perspective. Now I have a better uh, sense of how to analyze and break down writing and characters and such. Now I can objectively say why I'm not a fan of Luca. And it actually is, better because it's like, okay, I know what I want to see, but I'm not seeing it. And I know it's missing now because they gave it to Kagami, so I'm like, okay, now I really like her, and now it's making the story more complex. However, that's not there with Luka, because with Kagami, it seems like, yeah, she's just like this perfect person, she's kind of robotic, she doesn't really have much personality or much that makes her interesting, and they use that to say, oh, that's because her mother is really strict with her, so as a result, she's become very sheltered, and she's very disciplined, and she's very good at things because she has been raised to have tunnel vision on perfecting her talents. And now, as she's getting older, and she's in these years of her life where she should be having formative experiences with people her own age, she doesn't have the social skills to actually be able to do that. And as a result, things are very hard for her. And that makes her a really sympathetic character because of that. Because we can all relate to that feeling in some shape or form, even if we do have those types of uh, social skills. We've all been in a situation where it's like, there's just something not connecting. And it's frustrating. It's like you have that FOMO going on where you're feeling like you're missing out on life because you're just not able to connect with these people and you're not able to form these relationships so you can have these formative experiences. And through Adrian, because he has a similar experience with his father being so controlling and isolating him, the two of them can kind of bond over that, as well as the fact that they're both into fencing. And that actually makes you kind of root for that relationship, especially because you see that through Marinette too, like she's feeling that as well, because she gets to know Kagami, and she starts to empathize with her situation, and she wants her to be happy because they end up becoming very good friends, and it just complicates all of the emotions you feel towards the narrative. But with Luca, that's not there. Okay, we see why Kagami likes Adrian now. It's like, it makes sense why you would want them to be together. With Luca, why should him and Marinette be together? Like, why does Luca like Marinette? Like, what about her resonates with him? Not only that, but like, what is Luca's character really? Like he's a very surface level, very flat character. He just seems like he's very tailor-made to be like this guy of interest, not even for Marinette, but just in general. Like he's just a blank slate. So it makes it 
really difficult to want to see him and Marinette together when it's like, okay, the only good things about him are pretty surface level and you can say the same things about Adrian, except Adrian actually has a personality. And I'm saying this in a way of like, I want to see that. I want like, hopefully in season four, like we see something about Luca that makes him drawn to Marinette the way that Kagami is drawn towards Adrian, but we don't have that. His love confession to her was really generic. Like you could say that to anybody. Like that's the type of thing that a dude says to a girl before he ghosts her. I'm just like, there's nothing there for me to grab onto and like connect with and be like, oh yeah, I want to see that happen. And like, homies, like those of y'all who do see something there, like please tell me in the comments, like, I don't know, maybe I'm just privileged because I have the option of dating women and women are often a lot more empathetic and emotionally intelligent than men. So seeing a guy like Luca who has any shred of emotional intelligence is just like, oh my God. That's not an experience I can identify with, I guess. I don't know. I've talked enough about that whole love triangle dynamic. We can come back to that. I actually want to talk about what we did get from uh, these two. Th this is where it got very fan fiction-y. Like, bro, we straight up got a Miraculous Swap episode. Then we got to see Lady Noir and Miraculous Mr. Bug, whatever they call themselves. And like, bro, I appreciate that episode. Just like, those designs, bro. Like, I live for the aesthetic. And like, Lady Noir's design, like, the all black, like her swagger that she had, like, in that role, because it was like a different role from Miraculous Ladybug. Or now she could have like a little bit more edge and like that braid with the Bianca Belair vibes like bro I just appreciate that and also the whole like Adrian is ladybug also is pretty cool because it's like yo that whole color palette is just very aesthetically pleasing that's like a thing that people like draw fan art of I think people been drawn fan art of that most of what happened between them was really just kind of fan service because I assume they were doing fan service stuff because they knew that people who that is fan service towards we're going to be really upset and heartbroken once we got to the ending of this season. So they were just like, yo, we just gonna give y'all everything we can for right now to prepare you for what we're gonna do, y'all. We got two alternate timeline type scenarios here. One was where Ladybug gave Adrian the Snake Miraculous, which allows him to turn back time. He accepted this knowing he couldn't be Cat Noir because like Adrian was like, yo, I can show Ladybug who I am for me and like she'll know me aside from Cat Noir, all that stuff. So he was like, hell yeah, let's do it. And this didn't work out for a couple of reasons. For one, this was a scenario where they needed Cat Noir and he could not be both Cat Noir and Aspic, the Snake Miraculous. He could not do both at once. And also, these two, between Adrian and Ladybug, they could not stop thirsting after each other long enough to actually focus on what they were doing. So, Adrian kept having to go back in time and be like, all right, gotta do this again. And at one point, he even like, started confessing to Ladybug, like, yo, I love you, I'm Cat Noir, I've loved you this whole time. And she just has this look on her face like, what? And then she got sniped. And in the end, Adrian was like, yo, this ain't gonna work. It's been months. I've been trying to do this and it's not working. So it's like, yo, how about Luca? How about you give the miraculous to him to kind of like symbolize like, hey, you're trying to put me in this role in your life that you think I'm best for, but maybe this other dude would be better suited for it and you just can't see that. But in the practical application, it'll work out better. It's like a symbolism to be like, hey, it's okay. You can go with him. So that was interesting. And also Cat Blank was just, how is this even canon? <laughs> It's not canon. This is literally fan fiction. <laughs> it's just written by the people who made the show. <laughs> it was literally just, okay, we're gonna show y'all what happens if one of them figures out who the other person is. Because Marinette made Adrian a gift for his fifth name today, which I looked that up and it's a thing that rich European people do. She uses Ladybug to get into his room to leave the gift for him. And like, he sees her zipping out as she's going out of his room. And he connects the dots to be like, oh, Marinette is Ladybug. I guess that means she's the love of my life. And then they got together. They were happy and in love and it was great and all that. And then Gabriel Gress stepped in because Adrian is a model and a public figure. And his brand and Gabriel Gress's brand as well. The, the brand is that Adrian is a beautiful young man with a heart of gold and he's very inoffensive. They're selling this idea of like you and Adrian can fall in love and be together and live happily ever after. And it's kind of hard to envision that fantasy and have that hold up when you know that that person is in a relationship. So Gabriel goes to Marinette and he's like, you are hurting my brand by dating my son. Therefore you have to break his heart and break up with him. And if you don't, I'm gonna pull him out of school and he's just gonna be miserable for his whole life and y'all won't be together anyways. So 
obviously she complies, and then she's heartbroken. So he's like, all right, time to akumatize her, because he doesn't know she's Ladybug. He's just like, yo, this girl my son is dating. I'ma just make her evil. Also, his motivation might have just been that. It might have just been like, yo, I need to akumatize somebody. We never saw Adrian and Marinette as Ladybug and Cat Noir, where only Adrian knew that Marinette was Ladybug. Like, we never saw that dynamic. So either they just glossed over that, or there was just nobody akumatized in that time because love, therefore everyone's happy. So Gabriel had to be like, nah, -uh. I, gotta, I gotta ruin this. I got I need to akumatize somebody. So I'm gonna ruin my son's life. And then akumatize his girlfriend. That might have been it. But when he goes to akumatize her, Adrian's like, no, I won't let this happen. So he turns into Cat Noir, he cataclysms the Akuma, and then Marinette's like, what? Then Gabriel knows. He's like, oh, my son's a degenerate. Guess I gotta kill him. Which, I don't know if that's how it's actually gonna play out when they actually get to that point in the story, but that's how it played out here. So he reveals himself to his son, and of course, as Cat Noir, he's just, he's devastated because it's like, my dad's a supervillain. What? Why? And then he akumatizes him and turns him into Cat Blank, and Cat Blank spirit bombs the world and then he lives for eternity on earth as an akumatized version of himself just alone going insane but the thing is is earlier in the season a few episodes before i don't really remember the order alex marinette's classmate who in season one got a family heirloom that was a pocket watch turns out that was a miraculous the whole time and it's a miraculous that lets the user go way back in time unlike the snake miraculous where it's like i'm gonna go back five minutes this is like, yo, I can just travel through time at will. So she goes back in time to grab Marinette before Adrian figures everything out. And she's like, yo, I don't know what you did, but you f***ed everything up. So you gotta go fix it. So she goes forward in time to dehumanize Cat Blank. And then she has to go back in time because she can connect the dots to realize, okay, whatever I did here caused my identity to be revealed. And that created this alternate future where everything was just awful. So they fixed that, and as a result, none of it was canon. Because the ship ain't ready yet, you know, it was undercooked, you're gonna get salmonella, you're gonna burn your mouth because it's too hot. But I think that was also very important because what it establishes is that, okay, Marinette and Adrian could get together, and it would be a fine relationship. Yeah, they're gonna fall in love, they're gonna be together, all that junk. But it's not gonna work out right now. And I think what they're trying to say is like, they have to go and beat Hawkmoth first. Or they gotta redeem him to the point where Gabriel's like, okay, I gotta realize that maybe it's kinda crazy to be trying to play God and bring my wife back to life with these miraculouses and just appreciate the fact that my son, I have him and I want to give him the best life and of course he can go and date this girl who he's in love with. But based on uh, Cat Blank, I don't know if that'll happen. They might just have to clap this dude. Anyways, let's talk about the ending and how it ruined me. Because... So the last couple episodes really focus on the relationship between Kagami, Marinette, and Adrian. Because Marinette, she's become really close with Kagami, and she's like, I want you to be happy. I want you and my friend Adrian to be together so you can be happy, but also, my heart is breaking because I want to be with Adrian. And Kagami's like, yo, I can tell that my friend Marinette is really into this guy, but also, like, sucks to suck. Like, I don't want to hurt you, but also, I gotta look out for myself and my own happiness. Which, like, you go, girl. Like, that's not a bad uh, perspective to have, because, like, bro, I've compromised myself plenty for people who it wasn't worth it, bro. <laughs> like, so... But then Adrian is also being indecisive, because he's like, yo, I really am in love with Ladybug, but that's probably not realistic, so I should probably sell for Kagami, but also, should I be with someone who I'm selling for? I don't know. And this is also causing Marinette to be less focused as Ladybug, because usually... She goes from Marinette to turn on Ladybug mode, and she's like, all right, time to, it's all business. It don't matter what else is going on. She's seeing Kagami with Adrian, and she's just like, nah, not today. I'm a nervous wreck 24-7. It don't matter if I got the mask on. <laughs> she's distracted, and she accidentally goes to Master Fu as Ladybug, which reveals his identity to Hawk Moth. And then Hawk Moth is like, yo, I got the Miraculouses now, except for Ladybug and Cat Noirs. I got all of them. So he's on a power trip. Marinette is just breaking down because she's like, the guy I liked is gone with another girl. I screwed up his ladybug. I ruined everything. And she's just breaking down and Lucas there comfort her. 
And also, I just want to acknowledge that, like, later, as Ladybug, when she's like, I can't do this, I'm not good enough, Cat Noir also comforts her. And I just want to point that out, because, like, Luca having basic empathy isn't winning him over for me. I just want to acknowledge that. So this all leads to Hawk Moth going to Chloe, because she's resenting Ladybug. Yo, here's the Queen Bee Miraculous. I'm going to akumatize you, and then you can brainwash all the Miraculous holders. We can track them down. And then they'll come and get their Miraculous, and not only will that reveal their identities, but that'll lead to a big fight between all the Miraculous holders and Cat Noir and Ladybug. And then Master Fu's like, yo, Marinette, you screwed up, but like, we all screw up. I've screwed up a lot. I'm an old man. I have a whole life of regrets behind me. But you got strong character. You're great with the Miraculouses. You have so much potential. So he just gives the guardianship to her, which conveys this message to the audience that like, you're allowed to screw up, you're allowed to have emotions, and sometimes doing what you think is right is going to go against what you feel or what you want, and that doesn't make you a bad person. As long as you are willing to do what's best for everyone in that moment, everything will be fine. And that's what Marinette ends up doing. She ends up going with Luca, and Adrian goes with Kagami, and everyone's heart broke. Why? Because clearly, this is the end game. I'm just kidding. With Luca and Marinette, I think once the honeymoon phase wears off, they're gonna realize, oh, everything I discussed earlier. And then with Kagami and Adrian, I think like they're they're together because they're going to grow and develop as people, but I don't think that the people that they're going to develop into are going to be as compatible as the people they are now. So both of those relationships are not going to last forever, because that's what happens when you're a teenager. They aren't where they're gonna be in life, they haven't settled down at all like they're, they're still moving at 100 miles per hour that's why young relationships don't work out not because they're immature and don't know what they're doing or what they're feeling usually but generally it's just because they don't realize how fast things are moving they don't realize how fast their life is moving within a year they're gonna be a completely different person they're gonna be in a completely different place and next thing they know the person they thought they're gonna be with forever is no longer the same person like that's just how it be. That's life, bro. It's scary. Change is scary, but it happens. Put that on a t-shirt. But the thing is, is I think the important thing that these relationships are going to do is I think now we're going to see Marinette and Adrian figure things out. Like, they're gonna be like, oh, you Cat Noir, you Ladybug. They can come to that discovery without jumping right into a relationship. And like, that's the type of BS that this show really thrives with because you're just a degree of separation away from seeing this relationship happen. And now we've moved away from that by putting each character in separate relationships. So now they need to bring things back a bit and remove some of those degrees of separation. And I think the way they're gonna do that is be like, yo, y'all know that y'all were in love, right? And I think that that will be a very important part of their evolution as a relationship, not even romantically, but just between two people and their you know, their friendship. And then they'll go from there, wherever they're gonna go, very naturally. And by the time they actually will be able to get to the point where they're gonna end up together, because I mean, at this point, I believe, like, this is clearly the end game, like, they're clearly going to end up together. You don't make a show where the entire premise is two characters and their romance, and that's the main focus of, like, everything, and then you just don't go through with it. Like, I, it's gonna happen. I think that's what's gonna happen. That was season three. I'll wait for season four, whenever that comes out. Whatever happens with that. Again, production for this show is confusing to me. I don't understand it. I'm not even gonna pretend I do. So I'ma just say, that's all I gotta say before I plug my mixtape, which is coming out March 13th. Honestly, just wanna put that out there for everybody. It's gonna be on my YouTube channel, EPQM Productions, and my SoundCloud under the same name, March 13th. Don't know if that, that date has passed by the time y'all are seeing this, because the time I'm recording this is like close to that, but not so close where it's like, this is definitely gonna be out before then. So, that's all I gotta say, roll the outro. Thank you so much for watching Let's Talk With Tom on the Roundtable. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss a video. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like, and you can comment down below to give us your thoughts, or you can find us at Roundtable Vids on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, or you can find me at TommyPQM on Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram. If you want to go above and beyond to support the Roundtable, you can click the Join button down below to become a channel member, or you can pledge to us on Patreon, link in the description, and you can even support us by checking out our Teespring, where you can get shirts like this and many more to rep us out in public. As always, my name is Tom, I hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you next time. See ya!